Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will be learning about an interesting topic that is valency and we'll also learn how to calculate valency. Now from Bohr's atomic model, we know that the electrons are arranged in terms of shells inside an atom, which are named as K, L, M and N shells. And the electrons are also revolving around the nucleus in certain circular orbits. Now, the uh, outermost shell of an atom is known as the valence shell and the electrons that it has are known as valence electrons. And from Bohr and Burry rules, we know that an outermost shell or a valence shell can have at most 8 electrons. It means that it can have either less than 8 electrons or it can have exactly 8 electrons. So when a, when a valence shell has less than 8 electrons, it is called incomplete. And when it has exactly 8 electrons, the shell is said to be fully filled. And such a cell which has all 8 electrons is said to possess an octet. Now let's have some examples of uh, elements which have complete shells. The first example is neon. We can see that it has two shells that is K shell and L shell and its outermost shell is the L shell which has totally 8 electrons. So it is said to have an octet. And the next example is an argon atom which has three shells in total that is K, L and M shell and its outermost shell is obviously M shell which also has 8 electrons in total. So argon also has an octet. Now an oxygen atom seems to have only six atom in its six electrons in its outermost shell. So we say that it is incomplete or not fully filled. Same applies to sodium which has only one electron in its outermost shell that is M shell. So both these atoms are said to have incomplete valence shells. Now these atoms which have incomplete valence shells always try to acquire an octet configuration and for that they usually combine with other atoms and those atoms could be of the same element or even they can be of the another element and there are three ways in which these atoms can combine that is they either have to lose electrons or gain electrons or share electrons with the other atom. Now, the number of atoms that they lose, gain or share directly gives us the value of valency. So, we can define valency as the combining capacity of an element. Or we can say that valency is defined as the combining capacity of an element. It is a measure to show how, an, how good an element is at combining with other atoms. So let us have some examples. Sodium has an atomic number of 11. So its electronic configuration will be 2, 8, 1. It means there are 2 electrons in K shell, 8 electrons in uh, L shell and 1 electron in M shell. Now if it has to acquire an octet configuration, either it has to lose this electron, extra electron and uh, when it loses this one electron, it becomes 2, 8 which is an octet. The other way is to acquire 7 electrons from somewhere and to make this electronic configuration as 288 which is also an octet and it would always choose a simpler way. Now which way is simpler? Losing, seven, losing 1 electron or acquiring 7 electrons? It is obviously easy to lose 1 electron than to acquire 7 electrons. So, Sodium loses one electron and acquires an octet electronic configuration that is 2, 8. So, sodium has to lose one electron to acquire an octet. That is why the valency of sodium is 1. Let's take another example. The magnesium atom has an atomic number of 12. So, its electronic configuration will be 2, 8, 2. And similar way, in the similar way, magnesium also has two choices. 
either it has to lose these two electrons or it has to acquire six more electrons to have an octet electronic configuration. It would also prefer to lose two electrons than acquiring six electrons because losing two electrons is easier than acquiring six more electrons. So it loses two electrons to get the same octet configuration. So its valency is two because it has lost two electrons to acquire an octet. Same applies to aluminium with an atomic number 13. It has to lose these three electrons so the valency is 3. Now in all these cases uh, they have to lose electrons but there are even atoms which tend to gain electrons and when that happens when this number goes close to 8. So let us have some such examples. In chlorine whose atomic number is 17 and electronic configuration is 2, 8, 7. We see here that 7 is nearly close to 8. So chlorine also has two choices. It has to lose 7 electrons or it has to acquire 1 electron. It seems like acquiring 1 electron is quite easier than losing 7 electrons in this case. So what it does, it acquires 1 electron to have an electronic configuration of 288. Again, there is 8 electrons in the outermost shell, which means it is an octet. So here what chlorine has done, it has acquired, acquired 1 electron, so its valency becomes 1. Next example is of nitrogen whose atomic number is 7. So let's write its electronic configuration, which is 25. Again, we see that there are five electrons in the outermost shell and it has to lose five electrons or gain three electrons to come to an octet configuration. So it will again acquire three electrons because acquiring three electrons is easier than losing five electrons, right? So it goes to an octet configuration and since it has, it has to acquire three electrons, its valency is three. Same applies to oxygen where its atomic number is 8 and there are 6 atoms, I mean 6 electrons in the valence shell. So it will acquire 2 electrons and hence its valency becomes 2. So let us learn how to find valency in a stepwise manner. So first step we did was to write the atomic number of the element. Next we wrote the electronic configuration of that element and then we found out the number of valence electrons in it. Let us take the number of valence electrons as V. And then what we have to do is to check whether V is less than 4. And if it is less than 4, then the valency of the element is exactly equal to V. The next case is if it becomes greater than 4, then what we have to do is we have to subtract V from 8 to acquire the valency. The next condition is if it becomes equal to 4. If V that is the number of valence electrons becomes equal to 4, we simply write the valency value as 4. So for a better understanding, let me take an example. For lithium, we know that the atomic number is 3. So we write the atomic number as 3. Next step is to find the electronic configuration. So we write the electronic configuration of lithium as 2, 1. And we clearly see that the number of valence electrons in lithium is 1. So we clearly see that the number of outermost electrons that is the valence electrons is 1. And next step is to check for the condition. So whichever condition is suitable will follow that path. So here in this case, the number of valence electrons is 1. So we'll check here. If it is less than 4, yes, it is. So 1 is less than 4. So we'll go for this route. That is valency will be equal to 1, which means the valency is 1. Let me take another example. Suppose we take an example of sulfur, which has an atomic number of 16. So its electronic configuration will be 286 
and we can clearly see from here that the valence electrons is 6 in number. And then we check for the conditions here. V equals to 6. Is it less than 4? No. The second condition, if it is greater than 4? Yes. V equals to 6 is greater than 4. So we will go for this condition. And we will apply this formula to get the valency. So our valency will be 8 minus 6 which is 2. Let's have another example. For carbon whose atomic number is 6, its electronic configuration will be 2, 4. And here again we see the valence electrons are 4 in number. So we again check for the condition. If this satisfies or this satisfies or this satisfies. Finally we see that V equals to 4 satisfies this condition. So we will go with this condition that is V equals to 4. And so we will see that the valency will be exactly 4. So in this video we learn what is valency that is the combining capacity of an element and we can find it uh, by the number of electrons an atom gains, loses or shares when, while combining with other atoms. And we also uh, came to know about the steps in which we can calculate our valency. So I hope you had fun learning this lesson. Thank you.